Not content with your content? You've come to the right place. The Discontent Show with Joe Kuzma. Every brand starts with a story. Here's how you can grow your business by sharing it. Now, with today's topic, the host of The Discontent Show, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Discontent Show. My name is Joe Kuzma, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for Joe underscore Kuzma. And of course, if you're on Facebook, the page you want to search for is The Discontent Show. That's the official landing page for this podcast. I want to welcome back all of our returning listeners. I want to welcome any new listeners. The day is finally here. I'm going to cover the fifth pillar of content marketing. But before I do, I want to ask everyone if you got it right next to you. Or at least maybe you could visualize this if you don't have a pen and paper handy. But if you do pull that out in a second because it's going to help you kind of maybe visualize here exactly why you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to content marketing. There's You want to broadcast. You want to go as far as possible. I like to think of if you've ever done this yourself, you're trying to plant some grass or get some of those bare spots covered Maybe it's your front yard, your backyard, wherever, you know, and you've got that thing you push around or they get the handheld ones too, but you put the grass seeds in and it distributes far and wide and scatters and goes all over the place. Well, that's kind of like what content marketing is. Just to recap, these are my five pillars of content marketing. This is my own thing, although sometimes I borrow some concepts and ideas from other things that I've read or heard or learned elsewhere. These are my five big items. I feel you should be involved with as many of them as possible. This is where your piece of paper comes in handy because you draw a circle for each of these, okay? Blogging, podcasting, social media, email, and today, finally going to cover ebooks. But as you draw each of those five circles, I want you to draw them so they kind of overlap one another almost in a in a circle configuration themselves because what happens is you draw a big circle around that and you notice how even though some of these circles overlap with one another, you're going to have people who visit your website and read your blog, but they also listen to you on the podcast. Well, you're going to have some people who do both. You're going to have some people who do one or the other. You're going to have some that do neither of those. They just end up finding some of your information on social media. But that big circle you draw around all of those five circles themselves, that is, that, that's your broadcasting. That's where your grass seed is going. And it's going further because you have more and more of those rings that overlap. Now, in the middle, you draw one that goes maybe over all five of them, more than likely those are your biggest advocates. Those are the people that are going to be your clients or customers. So that's how this content marketing works. I know a lot of people get into this because they think, you know, it's free and easy to do a blog, podcast, social media. That can be true. That can also be false. And that's kind of where I'm at and and why these are numbered the way they are. That's why the fifth pillar is eBooks today. I'm going to tell you why ebooks are important. Some people may immediately turn this off. I'll never do an ebook. I can't write. Well, that's not necessarily true. There's all kinds of ways to do this. And eventually, I'm going to get to some tips on how to kind of make this stuff even easier on yourself. I know I did that with some tools for social media, but there's some easy ways to blog. There's some easy ways to podcast. There's easy ways to do everything maybe more efficient ways. I always say easy. I know sometimes it comes easier for some other uh, than others. And that's kind of where I'm at with the eBooks because if you do a book, it may, it may not be a small task, it might be a huge task. But if you're already writing blog posts and putting out a lot of content, you can actually repurpose some of that into a book because just like doing something in an audio format, if you heard some of the previous episodes of this very show, You could put this stuff into a book because you're going to find that not everyone goes on the web, not everyone's on Facebook or Twitter, not everyone's listening to podcasts, but maybe, just maybe, they have a Kindle in their hand or they use the Kindle app or the Apple iBooks or even to a lesser extent but still somewhat relevant is Barnes & Noble and their whole Nook platform. You could reach people like that. Now, that's a traditional ebook, but there's also 
You could also come up with PDFs that you could serve from your website. You could actually make money selling books. This is something whereas, you know, you're doing a blog and you're doing almost like a public service for free. If you have a book, this is something that could you you can monetize and maybe make a little bit of money from your time, maybe even repurposing some of the information that you have. But the biggest thing is with an ebook, it is going to once again expand your audience just like a blog would, just like being on different social media platforms may as long as you do those well and keep those up to date as I I'm always harping on people. Um, but it expands your audience into people who like to have something there to read because I don't know about you, but I, I still find some value, even if it's digital. Uh, I read books. I, I like to read books. I like to have something there. And when it's on a specific topic and it's something that's, that you're an expert at, even, even more the better. You know what I mean? Um, and that's another thing. You can position yourself further as an expert by having a book. Now, it still has to be a pretty good book, but there's so many tools. Like I said, if you, it's, it's not much different than blogging. It's just maybe on a, a larger scale. It all depends on how you're offering it, what medium you're offering this as. But expand your audience. It helps with SEO as well, depending on how that is uh, set up. I mean, if it's a PDF that's a readily available on your site. Yes, Google can scan PDF files. Um, some other things too is when you find out that you write this stuff, you're going to be doing some research on topics. And it's really great because I know from the few books that I've written, it's just reinforced my knowledge on a given subject. And so you end up uh, absorbing and even uh, sharpening your own skills yourself, including writing, including your writing skills. You're going to become a better typer, a better writer, uh, use better grammar. And trust me, if you're typing this stuff into like Microsoft Word or you're using one of these other tools that you used with blogging, it gets better as time goes by. Now, you might need some additional help, but I'll go over that in a second. Um, but it is far, far reaching is the value of having an ebook on your site because you can use this as a method to build out your other branches, your other pillars here of social media. One of those can be getting more people to sign up for your email list. That's mostly the chief reason you go to any of these websites. I don't have anything up on mine on this on JoeKuzma.com specifically, but I've used this same tactic with other websites that I've helped manage. And it's, you know, hey, trade your email address in. Hopefully it's a good email address and it's not a junk email address. Most people are, you know, if they're going to give you an email address, hopefully they're not going to be shady there and do something like that. But they're trusting that the information that they get from you already is going to be good, especially if it's pretty much free for just an exchange of an email address or Facebook like or a Twitter follow. There's different ways of setting these up. If you have a WordPress site, there's ways of setting these up. Uh, I'll be putting this information out in the near future, but this is a way of building your lists, building your audience, building your following if you have some type of little freebie. Now, if it's not like a PDF freebie type thing, you could also do like a, a Mobi or an EPUB, which is something that's traditionally published and could have digital rights management and stuff like that. I won't get into these big terms, but basically what it means is it's like if you've ever purchased a song off of, let's say, iTunes and you just can't share it, well, that's kind of how Kindle's locked into their own uh, platform, that Amazon ecosystem. But you know what? You could sell a book. You could sell a book from anywhere from a dollar to ten dollars or whatever price you want to put on it, whatever the value is. And you'll figure that out over time, too. This could be something that's another revenue stream for you, but it does help position yourself as an expert and it could lead to making actual real money from your blog because your blog is a promotional tool basically as we've learned this can be a promotional tool it could also be something that's monetized as well so i don't want you to look down on ebooks as something like dismiss it like ah i would never do that because you know what it could be something that's just 10 15 pages if it's something you're using as a list building tool you could also have something that's a free preview like that that leads into a whole series of books i just think about the very things I could even touch on. We'll give this for the example. There's the five pillars. I could do an ebook on each of those five pillars. Now, I wouldn't want to put them all in one book because 
there's different value to different people. Just as you're listening to this, if you are interested in doing the ebook aspect of content marketing, some people are just content with, nah, Joe, don't not really interested in doing a book. I'm just going to stick to a blogging or a podcast or just social media or whatever it may be. And that's quite all right. Uh, I'd like you to be, like I said, have your eggs in more than one basket, but you don't have to have them in like every single basket either. It is your comfort level, but just keep, the, just keep it in mind because it is a good tool and it can help separate you from your competition. Now, when you're doing an ebook, you want to do a topic that you, you you know what you're talking about, obviously, because if you pick something that you don't know, like I said, I don't know how to work on cars, I wouldn't want to talk about that, and it would actually do the opposite of make you look like an expert, so just don't dive in. Here's another thing. I'm going to cut off and kind of go on another path here for one second before I continue with that. Your blog or podcast or social media efforts are something that would help if you have that established it'll help promote your book. If you just have a book and you don't have those other things to to promote behind it, then you're going to want to do those. They kind of go hand in hand, if you see what I mean. And there's no right or wrong way. You could do the book first and then do the other things, or you could do the other things and then lead to the book. I just find that the book is usually something that is maybe the most cumbersome for people to wrap their arms around. And it's probably something that you're not going to do as often as, you know, if, if you have to put it into the rapid fire mode and which ones you could get the most out, uh, most out, it's going to be social media because you could do that within seconds. It's at your fingertips. It's going to take a little more time to write a blog. It's going to take a little more time to record a podcast. It's going to take a lot of time to get a book going. But just think about that, uh, that for the whole platform building when it comes to content marketing. These things go hand in hand. Of course, email lists do as well. If you missed the, if you missed the whole show on emails, it was maybe about a, a, a episode or two ahead of this one. So go back and check that out too, because email, even though it's old school, it's a platform that you run and it won't just disappear or fade so fast as it does on Facebook or Twitter. But all of these different methods are good for promoting your brand. And the ebook should do that too. It should meet a need or a niche, just like anything else, just like the blog, just like if you have a social media page, it's got to meet the needs of the people you're trying to reach, that audience, that following. So think of it that way. Uh, think about, I don't always want to say like, I don't want people to be discouraged if things don't necessarily, they go out there and you know they aren't rapid fire right away. It does take time to build these things up. So at least if you're self-publishing, there's maybe some minimal cost involved. I mean, it really doesn't cost anything but your time to write something. It really doesn't cost anything but your time if you proofread it yourself. But if you need to get somebody to edit it, it may cost you some time. You could give away maybe some review copies if you have friends or or you may even find some strangers. Some of these advocates I was talking about in that little center circle that I was having you imagine with your audience and all of the different pillars of content marketing – Maybe a review copy for free. They could point out some of the errors before you go into prime time with something. Because the last thing you want to do is have you know spelling, punctuation, things like that. Those things sometimes can be forgivable. I've actually read books where somebody wrote in their foreword, don't come at me with any type of corrections or errors that you found in this book. I'm just trying to get to the meat of the topic and give you some ideas and disseminate my knowledge. So if you find something that's wrong and there's a double space here or something spelled wrong here, uh, I, I apologize, but this is my knowledge. And you know what? That was okay too, but there's some that are kind of un- unforgivable there. And it makes you question things when you constantly find like mistakes. And mistakes will happen. You know my 80-20 rule on this type of stuff. Uh, be good. Don't dwell on being great. Don't let, you know, being a perfectionist be be obstructionist. <laughs> Don't let it get in the way of you completing these tasks and projects. So you got to start somewhere. You got to get that uh, snowball built up and then let it roll th- roll downhill. And before you know it, you're going to have a whole lot of this completed, and it's going to be a valuable book that's going to help you, help you in many ways, like I just said. So, um, don't quit on anything. If you get started with this, just keep it going. It gets rough at certain points, but I know from my own personal knowledge. 
in experience. When you do a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here, by the time you get done with it, man, it feels like such a great accomplishment, the great American novel as it might be. So I, I read a good quote. I, I can't even tell you where I can attribute this from, but it had to do with the ebook stuff among my own research, mind you, just to do this own <laughs> this episode. But uh, this stuck with me. It said, uh, reviewing with a microscope and not a telescope. That's exactly what I mean by all those things with 80-20 and, and whatnot is you want to look at it with a telescope, not a microscope, or else this will be the project from hell that never finishes, okay? Um, that And when you look at something yourself with your own eyes multiple times, you're going to miss it. You're going to start skipping over things. You kind of know what you wrote or you think you know what you wrote. You're going to read it differently, and you're still going to miss small errors here or there. So a second pair of eyes never hurts in this aspect. Uh, and, of course, robot eyes don't hurt either, but they're not going to catch everything all the time. They may think one word is okay. I mean, all of us have done this on a smartphone. The autocorrect is terrible. <laughs> it's one of my pet peeves. But uh don't just settle just for the autocorrect. Do try and get another set of eyes on that. Again, don't worry about being a perfectionist. Don't be a procrastinator as well. So a little more forgivable if you have something that's as simple as a giveaway, a PDF type format. If you're going to put this as like some type of product for sale, then you can put this into multiple formats. But you got to remember a few things as well. Self-promotion is still important when doing an ebook. In an ebook like a website, like a blog, like anything else, you can link back to yourself. Please do. Please put in your Twitter profile or your Facebook or your LinkedIn or whatever, your social media. Put put all of that good stuff in there. Put it in the beginning. Put it in the back. Make sure people can come back to you. If you have other books, this isn't your first rodeo, as they say. Put those. Put some of the links in there, too. Just keep in mind, it depends on the stores that you're on. There's certain terms of service, so you can only shill so much as you would like to shill. But do what you can. Don't forget, this is still part of your content marketing strategy. You still want to promote some of the other things that you do. So just the other thing is, as far as book titles, don't try and be too cliche. Try and find something that gets to the point, has your message, isn't used by somebody else, isn't boring by all means as far as the title. But also, when you're dealing with the cover, there are many sites you could go to. There's many people that are in the world of graphic design. I, I dabble in this stuff myself. If that's not your sort of deal, find someone else to do the cover. You don't want to do it in the old paint program. You don't want to use Microsoft Word art on this type of thing or Comic Sans font. If you giggled there, Comic Sans is not funny to design people, trust me. <laughs> so, but as the old, I said don't use a cliche, but I got to use a cliche here in order to drive the message across. Everyone judges a book by its cover, okay? So, don't forget <laughs> the cover it might be the only thing that makes you stand out. And there's all kinds of guidelines to covers too. It's going to be a tiny little thumbnail when you're searching on like these online stores. It's got to be something that's attention grabbing. There is an art to it. So if you do find someone that's an expert or at the very least, if you're going to try and go this your own because you know enough to be dangerous with using something like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or, or you know any of their open source alternatives to those programs, then at least look at other covers within your own brand or industry where you're going to be positioned against these same people for basically shelf space. And if you think about, I mentioned Barnes & Noble earlier, you think about walking there, what grabs your attention as you're walking around the store? You need an attractive eye-catching cover. You need words that are going to be big enough and legible enough on that cover. So you've got like maybe a couple seconds in order to grab someone's attention. It's no different than the social media realm where I say, hey, you got to have like a, a nice photo maybe or a nice image that goes with a with a blog post so people just don't keep on scrolling by well it's the same idea here so those are some things to keep in mind it, it doesn't hurt to look at what other people have done just make sure you keep it within context because 
if most of you, I imagine, are doing this as part of a business or a company or a brand that you run, uh, if you happen to be someone that's an author that's interested in getting into this on your own, it may be a little different. But like, like I say, if you're running Joe's Pizza Shop, for example, you don't want your cover to look like a romance novel. So keep that in mind. The context is all important. It's the same thing I say when I see some of these crazy ads with, you know, you got to have the, the American flag and your pets and your grandchildren and everything all on there instead of front and center, instead of your own brand name, your phone number, your address, your website address, or, you know, the actual products you're selling. So uh, keep all of that in mind. Ebooks, very important, very important. Uh, that's not something that, like I said, might be the easiest thing, but trust me, you get that ball rolling it's, it's that why not mentality that I have. Why not? If you're already blogging and doing this other stuff, you've, been, you've already been refining those skills. And this is just something that if you, you never know. And, and if we did know, if we knew what would go viral and what would make a million dollars, then we would all be millionaires, right? So you can never dismiss or discourage yourself from at least giving this a solid shot. So I hope that wrapping the five pillars. Now I'm going to come around to each of these now in the coming episodes and give you some more tips and hints on how to improve your content marketing efforts, uh, different tools you can use, how to be more efficient, strategy. A lot of this stuff is coming within the coming uh, episodes of the Discontent Show. So once again, I thank you for listening. Don't forget to give me a follow, subscribe if you happen to be on YouTube, iTunes, or any of these other podcasting platforms. And as I always like to sign off with, and I mean it, I sincerely mean it, my name is Joe. Be safe, be good, and I'll catch you later. Hi, folks. This is Joe Kuzma. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're not hearing things twice. I'm just here to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to today's show and being a follower and subscriber of the Discontent Podcast. And I want to remind you that if you're interested in more information about all the various things it is that I do, whether it be about this show, content marketing, or you want to ask a question, you may visit me at joekuzma.com. That's J-O-E-K-U-Z-M-A dot com. Or you can follow me as well on Facebook. Make sure you get the page and not the personal profile. Sorry, it's only for friends and family. Also on Twitter at Joe underscore Kuzma, LinkedIn or Instagram. Also, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe, whether that be on iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider so you don't miss out on any of the great episodes that we have. Once again, thank you again for your support. And I look forward, as always, to speaking and interacting with each of you again soon.